This is a video about coating, some of the principles of coating and some of the techniques involved in coating. Why would you want to coat uh, a plywood component in epoxy? Well, coating a wooden component in epoxy does several things. It, it enhances the stiffness of that part and it also inhibits moisture and also inhibits oxygen, two of the main components that cause rot. By inhibiting moisture, you really limit movement and you really stabilize the wood structure. Now perhaps as a small project on your boat, you might want to make some plywood washboards or plywood locker lids that will last for a long, long time. And of course, it's such a good idea to apply several coats of epoxy over those to make them very, very water resistant indeed. Now your choice of hardener will in many respects be driven by what the ultimate surface finish will be. If it's painted, then any of the standard hardeners will suffice. The, the 205 or the 206 hardener are perfect depending on, on conditions. For a clear coating where you're looking to see the wood grain below the final varnish layer, then the 207 special coating hardener is the hardener to choose. Now what I want to illustrate on this piece of plywood here is choosing that correct hardener. What I'd like to do is use the 207 special coating hardener to do this. Now of course, fundamental to success is surface preparation. And what we want to make sure here is that the surfaces are clean, dry and well abraded. So for coating, what do I need? Well, I need my special coating hardener, my 105 resin, mixing pot, roller, roller sleeve, mixing stick, roller tray, and of course, to meter this at the correct ratio, I need the three to one pump set, which is always labeled 303, A, B, or C, according to which pack size you're installing this in. 303 denotes the three to one pump set. It is important that you use the total 303 pump set because the resin pump and the hardener pump will deliver the three to one ratio. You can't use a 301 resin pump with a 303 hardener pump. It won't give the correct ratio. So it's very important to remember that. Now, of course, before I start using these materials, I'm going to make sure I've got good personal protection. I've got long sleeves on. I'm going to put some gloves on to avoid skin contact. And I'm going to wear some eye protection as well. So I can now install both the resin and the hardener pump into each container making sure that they're well secured and the first step is to make sure that I've primed the pumps and I just do that just by making sure I pump gently until I feel some resistance on the pump I've made sure I've primed the pump. Same with the hardener pump. Just a little shot in there, just to make sure I've primed it. I'm just going to put that to one side and then start with a fresh mixing pot. Now, if you want a really, really good finish here, you've got to use very, very clean equipment. You've got to make sure you're using a really clean mixing pot. You've got to make sure that you're using really clean rollers free from any dust. It's no good leaving these in a dusty workshop because then you'll be applying dust to your lovely clear coating. You've also got to make sure you use a nice clean mixing stick. It's no good using pieces of wood that you've cut through a bandsaw. They'll contain wood shavings. They might have fallen on the floor. They might contain contamination. So I'm going to meter out three pumps of resin and three pumps of hardener and then blend the two together. So I've metered out three pumps of resin and three pumps of the 207 special coating hardener. And now I'm going to spend two minutes blending the two together to a nice homogenous mix. So I'm now going to dispense this into a roller tray 
and apply to my work. And I'm now going to use my foam roller to apply that to the work. Of course, I could use a brush, but a brush doesn't distribute the epoxy as well as a foam roller. It does brush out very easily, but better than a brush is to use a foam roller because that really does distribute the, the epoxy very, very evenly over the surface of our work. You can see a strong colour change occurring here. That's a good indication that the epoxy is wicking into all the surface wood fibres. Very, very important to achieve a good tenacious bond. You'll notice that the epoxy mix in the mixing pot has that subtle greeny tint to it. But once it's on the work in a thin coating, you don't see that. But it does mean that it has this UV inhibitor in there, which helps in its resistance to UV damage. You must protect a clear epoxy coating with a very good quality two component varnish system with a good UV inhibitor in it. It's a good idea to do this process whilst the wood is cooling down. That avoids the air in the wood fibre trying to pass out through the epoxy coating and causing lots of air bubbles. We refer to that as outgassing and it's referenced in all of our technical literature when it comes to coating. So I've distributed my epoxy all over the surface of, of my part. But now I'd want to do just something else just to finish this surface off. And that is to say, I would like to level the surface and we call the action of that tipping off the surface. We can do that with a, a, a mixing stirrer, with a, a foam roller cut in half. We can use that rather like a paint pad to drag that down and just level the surface. And the first coat I always do with the grain, like this. And this tends to break any air bubbles, tends to reduce any orange peely effect from the action of the roller and creates a nice level surface upon which to then apply another coat. You see I'm being careful to make sure that I tip off every single square centimetre of the coating and I get a nice level evenly distributed epoxy coating. I'm going to leave this now to tack till it becomes as sticky as masking tape. Then I'm going to carry on the coating process and add another coat and then do the same thing again, allow that to tack, then the same process again until I build up to three, possibly four coats before I stop. And then I leave the whole coating to cure before coming back possibly the next day and lightly abrading it with something like 180 grit paper nothing finer than 180 grit paper, and then carrying on with a two component varnish system with a good UV inhibitor in it to give me clear coated, very, very durable wooden parts. So returning to our panel that we've applied one coat to, we're now going to apply a second coat just to illustrate how quickly the film thickness builds up. It's very important that you apply more than two coats because film thickness really corresponds to how water resistant the final panel will be. Epoxy is incredibly water resistant, but it does depend on film thickness to do its job. So I'm going to now mix up four pumps of the resin and four pumps of the special coating hardener. Remember this is a, a three to one system, so we've got the three to one pumps installed. And you can see here this yellow tint that the hardener gives to the resin. And I mix the two together. I spent two minutes mixing this. I'm going to dispense this into a 
roller tray. Make sure that I load the foam roller with the epoxy. Then I'm going to apply my second coat. Now there aren't too many visual clues here to where the second coat is and the first coat ends. So you've got to really be quite methodical in your coating. And I always tend to use the roller width as a guide to give me a sign that I've coated every single square centimetre of the surface. You can see quite clearly that the surface coating is building quite rapidly. And that might make you think, oh, I only need two coats on here, but it's always wise to add your minimum of three coats to get a good, good, robust coating thickness. On finishing this coating, I've just added another three pumps of resin, another three pumps of hardener, and I think I've got just the right amount to finish coating this board. I've mixed this for two minutes, put this into the same roller tray, and then carry on working. Just making sure I've distributed the epoxy evenly over the surface. And you see clearly how the wood grain is being lifted out, the colour is deepening. This is all a really good sign that the epoxy has wicked into those surface wood fibres and provided a tenacious bond. Now, just to level this surface again and tip it off, the technique that I used on the first coating, I'm going to use again a foam roller cut in half with a wooden stirrer uh, attached to it. I'm going to use this just like a paint pad and instead of tipping this off vertically, I'm going to tip it off horizontally and that will ensure that I get another level coating. And what we do is alternate the direction that we tip this off on each subsequent coating. That ensures you have a nice level surface with no high spots, no low spots, so that when you sand through it, we're creating a level surface where we haven't sanded through any low spots just to sand the high spots off. So it's a nice level coating consistently all the way through. And you can see how, how that makes a difference. From this moment, I would want to add a third coat and then certainly possibly a fourth coat to ensure that I've got enough substantial coating on here so that when I come to abrade it, I don't go through it and back into the bare wood. That's coating, very, very straightforward. But what I would suggest is to anybody that has never done this before is to have a practice on a small scrap of wood. Really good policy.